Welcome back to the show. So current federal government numbers suggest that there are approximately 235,000 homeless individuals in Canada. Now, uh, however, based on brand new research, the actual population is likely three times higher than that. Wow. Here to uncover the truth about the growing homelessness crisis in Canada is outreach worker and case manager Lorraine Lamb. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Witness the impact of homelessness, the homelessness crisis firsthand. So can you tell us a little bit more about what you do and also give us a sense of the scope of this, this issue in Canada? Yeah, so I am currently based in the downtown east area of Toronto. Um, I'm an outreach worker, which means I literally just go out on the streets and connect with people where they're at. Um, some of what I do is really just su supporting people to access basic needs, maybe advocacy stuff, and honestly, a lot of crisis intervention. I would say the scope of the crisis is definitely worsening. You know, recently there was a study that showed that in order to make basic rent in Toronto, you have to work a job that pays $33.90 an hour. That's impossible. Uh, we talk about the inflation of groceries, like, oh, my cauliflower is so expensive. But people who are on social assistance, you know, someone on disability gets six hundred dollars a month to live off of for basic needs it's impossible and then the wait list for gear to income housing is 15 years for a single person and longer if you have mobility issues and require accessibility so you know a lot of the people that I work with die on the streets before they even get housed and the life expectancy for an average unhoused man is 55 years old compared to the average of 80 years old and for women it's 42 if you're a homeless a homeless woman at 42 that's kind of the life expectancy so it's wow. drastic yeah. Wow. So can you explain the concept of hidden homeless, homelessness and how it differs from traditional homelessness? Yeah, so most people, when we talk about homelessness, they think of the people that we see sleeping on a park bench or maybe riding transit in tents. Hidden homelessness is about people who don't have stable and permanent housing for themselves. So they might be people who are couch surfing, maybe single parents who are staying at a grandparents, maybe, um, you know, uh, I would say people who are in jails are also considered home, hidden homeless as well. Um, there was a recent survey conducted by the Angus Reid Institute, and it revealed something pretty shocking, that one in three Canadians say they are experiencing financial difficulties. So for a family that is already struggling, they're penny-pinching, maybe they've already borrowed a lot of money, um, talk to us about how likely or how close they are to actually ending up homeless. Most of us are closer to becoming homeless than becoming millionaires. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the cost of living is impossible for so many people right now. I'm personally married and it's very practical because we get a dual income. But when I was living on my own, it was really hard to make ends meet. We keep talking about the inflation of groceries, but we're not talking about how, you know, rents are going up. In Toronto, the average uh, rent for a one bedroom is nearly $2,000. Um, if you're on disability, you can get a total of $1,100. So even if you spent every penny on housing, you can't actually find a place to live. Mm -hmm. wow. Lorraine, you say that the narratives in dominant conversations often stigmatize the individual when we should be looking at really the system. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, you know, I think it's really easy to blame the person who's homeless. You know, if only they just worked harder or tried harder. But the reality is, People that I work with are some of the hardest working people I know. It's hard to survive on the streets. I know people who don't sleep all night because they don't know where to go and they're carrying their stuff everywhere and then they have to find a place to eat, find a place to use the washroom. So my hope actually is that we ask better questions. You know, if we're mad in an encampment, can we ask, well, why is somebody there in the first place? High rents equals more tents. That's just the reality of where we're at. Mm. Um, you know, if we're upset about somebody, you know, defecating in our backyard, well, nobody that I work with woke up this morning and said, I would love to poop on private property. Mm -hmm. Frankly, how many, when was the last time we were walking around downtown and said, oh shoot, I need to use the washroom, and there was none available. Um, people are stealing from grocery stores because Again, social assistance rates are low. You have to work a job 33.90 an hour. It's impossible. And I think we need to also ask questions about the larger system. You know, I love that you alluded to the Greenbelt earlier. You know, the developers for profiting, are we asking questions about them? What about the financialization of housing that people can have access to so much housing and are profiting off of that? That's a problem. So I think it's also important to recognize too that like there are certain uh, things around racism and sexism and classism that push people over the edge. We can't wear an orange shirt and, you know, read a land acknowledgement and meanwhile say no to encampments and say we want more cops when we know that Indigenous people are overrepresented as homeless people and over overly incarcerated. So homelessness is not a personal failure. I think we need to look at the larger systems that have caused people to become mm -hmm. in that situation. Amen. Yeah. So 
again, another staggering statistic. In the last year alone, the number of encampments around the city has doubled. Yeah. So the city's removal strategy, um, I think a lot of people will remember seeing that on the news. Um, it was based off of what happened in Vancouver. So tell us why it's so controversial. It's controversial because we're not actually addressing the issue at hand. When we move people from one park and say you can't camp here anymore, without actually offering housing, people will just end up in a different park. And that's exactly what we saw in Toronto when Bellwoods was cleared. People moved to Dufferin Grove, and now we have a lot of people at Allen Gardens. At the end of the day, people are trying to get housing, and the wait list is so long. My friend Jesse, um, he was in his early 20s in an encampment, his tent was cleared, and he died two weeks later, just the day after I got a call to say he was accepted for housing. Wow. So these are vulnerable people and we cannot be playing whack-a-mole with people's lives when what people are really just trying to do is survive. Can I jump in for a quick second, please? We heard the mayor at the time saying they were being offered shelter. That, I would say, is not a very transparent truth. They were offering people spaces in congregate settings when COVID was still a uh, peak. So they were telling people to go into spaces where you're in a dorm setting with 20 or 30 other people. Frankly, a lot of people don't feel safe in shelters. Um, there are some hotel shelters that were set up um, those were sometimes available to people, but they were full pretty quickly. And I would love to say that in Toronto, there's two more hotel shelters closing this month, which means that's going to be several hundred people that will be back out on the streets. So again, if we're upset about encampments, we need to stop villainizing the people who are most at the margins and ask questions about the larger structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, I mean, we're just scratching the surface, Lorraine. Thank you for the work that you do in Thank providing you. your insights to Thanks us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very clear, not an easy situation to solve, not a one-size-fits-all solution to this crisis, but we will continue to have to con the conversations here. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.